We'll just eat the sunlight, shall we, when it's not raining? Or maybe you've got some secret recipe where megawatts make up for a really hearty and healthy nutritional dinner. There's a concept from energy economics called energy return on investment, or EROI. It's usually applied to things like oil drilling or solar panels, where you calculate how much energy you have to spend to get more energy out. Now this doesn't map perfectly onto agriculture. Farming is about growing food and not fuel, but the logic still applies. You have to put energy into the system. Uh, that would be in the form of fuel for machinery, electricity for irrigation, fertilizer made from ammonia, and the return is the calories in the crops you harvest. The catch is that not all fields are created equal. Some have rich topsoil, good drainage and ideal conditions. They give you more output for less input. Others are rocky, shaded or awkwardly shaped. They're fields where a farmer might end up having to pour in energy and barely get a return. To grow turnips in a marginal field, you might need a fertilizer made from ammonia, which is produced via the Harbour Bosch process, which is a famously energy-hungry industrial reaction. So even if the farmer isn't literally putting energy into the ground, the tools and the chemicals of farming use energy to make, which ultimately costs the farmer money. Chris doesn't seem to understand that not every field is worth planting, because the energy it might take to make it productive is greater than the energy that it could produce. So when our farmer decides not to plant in a marginal field, but instead installs solar panels. He might actually be saving energy overall. He's reallocating the effort and inputs into land that yields better results. So that's not betrayal, it's just basic resource management. Megawatts aren't replacing food, they're just enabling it more efficiently in a different field. 